on top of the Indians as the Sox come to bat in the last of the eighth inning. Adrian Beltre oh, gets thrown behind now from Jensen Lewis. He takes exception to that. They tried to get Ortiz last inning. They go after Beltre here in the eighth and miss. And this will bring the dugouts out here at Fenway Park. And Beckett is the most boisterous as he is pointing in the direction right out front and being held back now as they come together. Here we go. Things appeared to be calm until Beckett arrived. And it moved to a new level right after that. And DeMarlo Hale, to his credit, getting Josh out of that pile as quickly as he could. It's like Beckett's target was Shelly Duncan. Yes. Couldn't tell. Did look like he was pointing in his direction. John Farrell still down there having some words with somebody. And now Tito Francona's having words with one of the coaches. I see this every day. Things had calmed down. The players had basically left. Uh, John Farrell was in a conversation with one of the coaches for the Cleveland Indians, Steve Smith, and then Francona jumped in the middle of it. He was the third base coach for the Indians. So now they start leaving again. Was clearly intentional uh, that he was throwing behind Adrian Beltre, and that's the second guy in two innings. Ooh, a lot of the series left. This is game two. Duncan was hit in the first inning. Yeah, Duncan was hit in the first inning. Also, the crew chief Tim Lucky. This is Duncan in the first inning after a big night last night, getting hit off the elbow. So let's see how they clear this out. They are going to throw Lewis out of the game. He's gone. See what they do here with Josh Beckett. He was going to be out of this game anyway, as they had kind of given him the handshakes in between innings. At the end of this, his last pitch of the eighth inning. For well, what reason would they have to throw Beckett out? I mean, really, I mean, he was just he was on the field like everybody else. You can make an argument he was the aggressor, which is the only thing yeah, I'd say. You're right. When he gets out there, he kind of moves the pile. We'll see. But it is coming down here at Fenway Park. And so far, the only ejection is Jensen Lewis. Step aside. Fill you in when we come back. And the butt out in front. And Suzuki's going to throw back to third. And they're going to have Meyer in a rundown. Meyer is going to stay in the rundown long enough to get the runners to move up to second and third. But... And now, what is going on? He ran out of the baseline. Well, he was running back to <laughs> the dugout. The yeah. dugout. Well, Jerry Blevin tagged both of them. I think it comes down to which guy yeah. is the right guy to tag. Yeah. And now he's all the umpires are going to get together. I'm going to stay out of this one. <laughs> well, it's it's the runner at third's back. Well, very very interesting and not quite frankly probably a little confusing for everybody watching. So hang in there. Yeah, Bill Hahn is the one who pointed to Betancourt.
Well, they're going to keep the runners on base, so I think that's the reason Bob Guerin is being addressed by the two umpires. And especially Bill Hahn's got an explanation, explanation because he's the one that pointed at Betancourt with the out at third. Wow. So you're saying it looks like they're going to call Meyer out. But Bill Hahn pointed at Betancourt and said, you're out. Watch the third base umpire. It's it, Meyer is tagged first. He's not on the bag. And then Betancourt is yeah, tagged. He's out. Yeah. But <laughs> but Meyer never got to third either. No. He was tagged out. Well, he missed the bag when he went back. <laughs> and after a mess up, mix up, Gary's going to get ejected. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. So Myers going back. It's going to be both runners at the bag. Levin's tagged him. He's off the bag. And then Bill Hahn pointed to Betancourt. That's the confusion. And that's the explanation Hahn and Darling are giving to Bob Garrett. It's funny. Betancourt. Betancourt was right. He was Same telling thing. him to stay. Hold up. They and just now, threw him out. Now Bob Garrett gets thrown out. And... Gary Darling's been in the middle of controversy before, and so has Bill Hahn, and I'm not sure they're exactly sure no. what the heck just happened. So Bob Guerin's going to leave, and now Darling's going to explain it to Ned Yost. Why was Blanco Bunny? Oriano, the only. Trump did not reach base. That was inside, and that's it. But Troy Hawkins has been tossed for throwing inside to Alfonso Soriano. Warnings were issued in each of the first two games of this series. And Hawkins working uh, too far inside for Tom Hallion's taste. Soriano actually got hit on the jersey. So he will take first base. A lot of frustration on the part of the Brewers, even though they won the first two games of this series. Ken Maka feels that his team, specifically Ricky Weeks and Prince Fielder, have been targeted by opposing pitchers throughout the season. Now Maka's getting fired up. He I think he's been tossed too. There's no question. You could read Tom Hallion's lips. Uh, first pitch was up and in. The second one clipped Soriano on the jersey after giving up a three run homer. It's uh, beside the point how many times Prince Fielder and Ricky Weeks have been hit by pitch this year. In this particular situation, warnings had been issued. And in the estimation of Tom Hallion, Hawkins was throwing at Alfonso Soriano. You do not have to warn a guy again after warnings have been issued, and he just ejected it. Remember, the first pitch was up and in. This one came far enough in just to catch a piece of Soriano's jersey. And then Tom Hallion said that's enough. Well, he might have been looking at Latroy Hawkins when he said, let's go. And now Maka has been thrown out. 
Uh, so Hallian was telling Troy Hawkins I've heard enough and eventually tells Ken Maka the same thing. And he got him looking. Torrey goes down looking. He's going to have a word with Ron Copeland. And now Torrey's been ejected. Torrey was having some words right after that. And now Torrey apparently has jabbed Ron Copeland with his helmet and has lost it. And if that's the case, looks like Torrey's going to, he's going to miss some games with a suspension, you would think. But for Torrey still being upset, you know something must have been said in the exchange. Now Sosha's been ejected, a bag of baseball have come out. I'm guessing he must have said something back to Torrey. Ron Copeland must have said something to Torrey Hunter to set him off. This isn't just a straight, I'm going to argue, location on whether it was the last pitch or the first pitch. Ron Copeland must have said something. We saw last. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, here we got here. Molina already. right in the face of Brandon Phillips. And we've yet to set the stage about everything that happened, and you get a look at it. For those who may not have known, Brandon Phillips last night to both Jim Day and Hal McCoy made some comments about the Cardinals, saying he hates the Cardinals. And used some less than family language in his descriptions. And as soon as Brandon got to the plate, Yadier Molina got in his face. Now there's Roland and Molina, former teammates. This series has been void of bad blood probably until the end of the night last night. And there's Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa. They've had their issues with one another over the years. Well, I'm really stunned that a war of words would actually cause the benches to empty before they get going in the bottom of the first inning. Obviously, some discourse between Yadier Molina and Brandon Phillips sparked the whole thing. We will know until after a game exactly what was said. Now, Scott, now Scott Rowland is getting into it. And now it is turning ugly. In the, with Chris Carpenter. And Carpenter's the one down there chirping. Carpenter had issues with his own teammates last night, and it is getting really ugly as we've got punches and kicks. Johnny Cueto, the starting pitcher, is being wrestled away. And this is not good at all because this is the kind of situation where somebody can, can get up, get hurt, get their finger stepped on, and it's just not baseball. I'm hoping that the umpires can get this thing under control and we can get on to playing the game of baseball because nothing is going to be solved by this. But I will tell you one thing. If there is not a lot, a lot of love between these two ball clubs, despite the fact that a lot of players on each team have played for the other team before, now there's going to be some ejections and we're going to find out who. And we'll have questions and suspensions and fines to follow as well. And you nailed it, Chris. It was Chris Carpenter who seemed to be kind of in the middle of some of the worst of it. Well, if he's not whining about his own teammates, he's whining about somebody else. He had it out with his own player last night and Brendan Ryan because Ryan had a wrong glove at the beginning of the game and then was playing in the wrong spot to snag a ball that went for an RBI base hit. LaRusse is going to have to try to sort it out with his guys. Dusty Baker is going to sort it out with his guys. Hopefully no one got hurt here because that would be a real shame. Right now he doesn't appear so, Chris, but Scott Rowland, who is trying to play peacemaker, at one point we saw a good look of him talking with Yadier Molina. That appeared to be going okay, but then that's maybe where Chris Carpenter intervened. Well, when Brandon Phillips was introduced to come out to the plate, he got a big round of applause from the fans here. I don't see Brandon Phillips in the mix anymore. I'm wondering if he was the one that got ejected. Well, there he is going right down the steps now, and that is very possible. This is not going to be easy for these umpires to try to figure out either. And it appeared, though, Chris, that Brandon Phillips was set to just step in and get ready to hit. Well, you know, how often do you see a catcher going up and go face-to-face -face with the leadoff hitter? This is all Molina. And I know I'm the Reds announcer, but I can tell you the whole thing was sparked by the catcher saying something to Brandon Phillips. Now, Brandon Phillips is coming back into the on-deck circle, so it appears for the moment 
There's nothing involving his status, nor Molina's for that matter. Maybe it's the managers that have been thrown out. That is what the indication There's no Dusty Baker, and there's no Tony La Russa. Maybe they'll meet underneath the stadium. Well, they've had their moments. And there's no other indication of players at this point. But you know the Major League Baseball will be looking into this and more than likely suspensions and fines. So our indication is that Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa both have been tossed from the game. That puts the Reds in the hands of Chris Byer right now. And he stole that one easily. Easily. On deck is Johnny Gomes, the count one and two. Well, DJ Rayburn has got a big strike zone today. Sure looks like it. That breaking ball looked up around the chest area of. Or just below the chest area, I should say. He just throws Votto out of the game. You gotta be kidding me. Joey Votto is tossed, and this is the second time this year we've seen this happen. It occurred in Chicago. And Dusty Baker will come out to protect his first baseman who's been rung up. I'm just getting ready to say that strike zone looked like you could drive one of those F Series Ford trucks that we talked about in our opening billboards. Well, that that may uh, that may draw the ire of the baseball office with something like that. I mean, there was no show up, no anything going on at home plate, and then boom, Rayburn throws him out of the ball game. Well, and Dusty Baker, this is his first game back from his two-game suspension. Well, that is a bad move by Rayburn. Let's take a look at this pitch here. Joey Votto. You see this a lot where a hitter will get back into the box. He's talking to the umpire here. And then, boom, he throws him out of the ball. He wasn't showing him up. He wasn't doing anything other than having a conversation, talking about the pitch prior to that. And he throws him out of the ball game. So now the Reds are going to have to get somebody up to go finish the at bat. I mean, that ball was a bad pitch to start with. And if you make a bad call, you at least as an umpire have to understand that you're going to get some kind of comment from the pitcher. Hmm. Wow. Well, Miguel Cairo is already in the game. He's starting at third base. Jim Edmonds, who has played some first base this year with Milwaukee, is already in the lineup as well. Ramon Hernandez not in the starting lineup. Ramon played a number of games at first base. Now, Joey Votto is still barking in the dugout. Well, it looks like Stubbs is going to come to the plate, and that would mean that Edmonds would move to first base. So, Drew Stubbs is going to come finish the at bat. One and one pitch to Johnny Damon. That one misses outside. Damon one for three today. Doubled and scored a run in the third inning. And Jeff Nelson's hearing a little something coming from the dugout. And he gives somebody the boot. Now the question is, is it Ozzie? Or somebody else? Got a very good chance to be Don Cooper. Yep, it is Don Cooper. Thought perhaps that fastball was over the outside corner. One and one count on Johnny Damon. The bottom of the eighth. Just see what they do. Well, they're not finished scoring, maybe. Whoops. Uh, Jimmy's caught. And Ishikawa can't track him down. And Jimmy nearly eluded the tag. And Aribe, according to the second base umpire, Larry Venover got him. But something's going on. And here comes Ruiz. He's going to score. They, call ball. they must have called a balk before all of it happened. They're saying that Ramirez didn't step off. That was a late call by Mark Carlson. I don't know who called it, but that's what it looks like they called it. Yep, they're saying that they, they called a ball. 8 3 Phillies. I'm watching the replay. I didn't see the third base umpire, Jeff Nelson, and the home plate umpire, Mark Carlson. Both were walking out to the mound calling Bach. 
Well, and, and he pointed to his thigh, uh, uh, did Mark Carlson. So he's talking about what he did not do with his leg. And, you know, that play, which rarely works, uh, is going to work this time for the Phillies because, oh, there he goes. Because you're not allowed to argue about a ball. It's like balls and strikes. He and, let him, too. Yeah, he let him go for a while. But he warned him, you know, he can't do this. You're not even allowed to come out that far normally and argue about a balk. Jimmy's probably saying, well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the pickoff move. I, all of a sudden, he jumped on me. Yep. Oh, Bochy's been ejected. And he's still going to get his money's worth from Mark Carlson. And as well now. Well, let's see what they say he did. Because he fakes the third. Oh. oh. I didn't re honestly, Wills. I didn't realize he faked to third. Yeah, he did the fake to third, throw the first thing, which we were, I was just about to say. Well, that never works, but it worked this time. But he saw that right away. And then there's there he goes. There he comes Carlson it. with a ball. Now yeah. I, I I think what they're saying, Wills, and I could be wrong. I'm just trying to deduce it. Is that he never stepped toward third. Runners will be moving. Let's see what the kid fires here on this three-two pitch. Hudge chased it, and that might have been a changeup. Oh. Was it tipped? I guess he got a piece of it. Bobby Cox is going to come out and argue. And the first base umpire, Scott Berry, is going to offer some help, too. And Jerry Davis is going to be summoned as well. Pudge missed that ball by about a foot. Yeah. I thought I saw Scott Barry already make a motion with a fist in the air when he was walking toward Sam Holbrook. They say that David Ross dropped it as he pulled it out of his glove. And they may have lost their starting catcher in this game. Here's the pitch, and it does appear that he foul tipped it. The ball will go right off the end of the bat into the glove of David Ross. But watch, David's taken the ball out of his glove and dropped it. And the umpires agreed that it was a catch and then dropped taking the ball out of his glove. Rodriguez threw his bat. The helmet will go shortly. And then he will go to the showers without ever catching a pitch tonight as he was thrown out, apparently, by Brian Knight, the third base umpire. There it is right there. Still in August. Those are strong. Now, both benches were warned, and you just plunk Miguel Cabrera, and Eric Cooper's not doing a thing. I think Leland's saying, hey, he's got to go. But, you know. You know, whether it's an intentional or not, when, it, when you've hit a couple home runs, you feel like it's intentional. Now, in, in case you just joined us, first inning, first pitch from Jeremy Bonderman, he plunks Brett Gardner. And automatically, Eric Cooper warns both benches. Well, how do you have a guy who just hit two home runs get hit, and after you warn the benches, that's not on purpose? And I'm not saying it is. But if you thought the first inning was on purpose, how's that not on purpose? The mistake was you don't warn him in the first inning right, after right. the first pitch. Right. And then you're, you don't have an argument here. You have nothing. And it still looks suspicious. But you saw Chad Godin's reaction. And you can usually tell with the reaction of a pitcher. This is the first inning warning to both benches. After Gardner was hit, remember Gardner had slid into Guillen to try to break up the inning-ending double play in the first game. And this is the first pitch of this game. And then he plunks Gardner. Now, this is Godin hitting Cabrera. And he looks, I, I can never read whether they did it on purpose. I mean, what, what, a, what do guys look for? I mean, is there something that gives away whether he did it on purpose? I don't, yeah, I, I don't. I mean, he looked like he almost got away from it. And then in a five-run game where you're beating somebody, I just don't see that you would do I that. I don't either. But you know what, Michael? If a guy throws at somebody on purpose, usually he'll just kind of keep walking towards the batter with his head up. You know, almost like, hey, right. there it is. Right. And you can see Chad go down. It happens. He looks down almost like that's not what I wanted to do. 
We talked about Eric Cooper behind the plate. Line drive, base hit into right field. Damon picks up a single as Cabrera advances to second. We talked about it. Cooper behind the plate. Use some common sense if somebody else gets hit. And, you know, Jim Leland, in my opinion, has a, a very valid argument. You can Cooper's see Eric Cooper saying, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But he doesn't agree with him, but I got gotcha, you, he keeps saying. You know, and, it, and it's always said, and it's, you know, that the New York Yankees have much more to lose in a beanball war than, than a team that's ten and a half games out. And, and you hate to say it, you don't want anybody to get away with anything, but, you know, Jim, Jim Leland has every opportunity to stand up for his player there. I mean, here's your your big part of your offense that just got plunked, and, and, and in my mind, in your mind, flashed, it wasn't intentional. Right. But as a manager, you've got to sit sure. there and make an issue here that it shouldn't have been a warning. My guy just got plunked. Who hit two home runs. Right. During the commercial, Jim Leland talked with Eric Cooper the entire time. Didn't get really heated, but it was animated. And then retreated back to the dugout. And Gardner leads off and takes a pitch outside. 1-0. And this was what was happening the entire time you were watching commercials. And that was the intensity pretty much the entire time. Talking fast and making a point. Three one. That, oh. like a, that was like a cutter or a slider. Ryan gave up on it. That's a backdoor breaking ball. Watch this pitch. This kid has some stuff. And Zimmerman foul tips it into the catcher's glove, and he doesn't show that kind of emotion very much. And Ryan Zimmerman's been ejected. Why? He's mad at himself. He did nothing to the umpire. That was not a called third strike. How can you throw a guy out for showing emotion on the field? And evidently Scott Berry must feel well he's mad about the strike two pitch. Zimmerman ejected. Boy, do these guys have quick triggers or what? Remember Ryan showing a lot of emotion here. He did start toward first base, but then he came back, never dropped his bat. Nope. And then he's going to foul tip strike three into the glove of McCann. And he's frustrated with himself. Didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. And he gets tossed out of the game. Probably one of the good guys, nicest guys, quietest guys in the major leagues. So in two nights, the umpires have tossed. A future Hall of Fame catcher that's got the most games ever in the major leagues from the dugout. Jim Riggleman's about to get tossed right now because he's got to have Zimmerman and Rodriguez's back. But just two terrible ejections back to back night by this this umpiring crew. Bayonetta, a right handed hitter, and I don't think Carlos Gonzalez can play at all with a stiff leg. Breaking ball got him looking and Olivo is fit to be tied. Arguing with Ladd, look out, Miguel, you're going to be history in a minute. Look out, be careful. Here comes Tracy trying to get between them. Olivo just trying to keep his catcher in there. Remember, he has only one right hand hitter in the dugout. That's his other catcher. So he's trying to save Olivo, get him out of there. And Olivo's not finished yet. So Olivo has struck out three times tonight, and he just finally boiled over. That is also 10 strikeouts on that big curveball. 
And look at Miguel. It looked like he was ready to hit somebody with the bat. Fortunately, he just drives it into the ground. Pow! Olivo, when he said that, you saw Laz Diaz raise his right hand, and it could be that he got the hook. Now, Tracy thought he was saving him, but if we interpreted Diaz with that right hand, he was kicking him out. That's a pitch he really didn't need any help on. I'm sure that's what Nick is saying. Of. He doesn't need any help. And this is tough enough as it is. You can see Buck Showalter agreeing. So from his level, he can tell high and low. And this ball missed by a good six inches. And this is strike at the knees. And now he's not real happy. That's back to back. Well, Nick is saying it's not a strike. You rarely see Marquecas complain. Wow. That, that's not even close to being a strike. And he calls him out. Marquecas likes that call even less, and Nelson walks away from it. But Showalter is going to come out to protect his hitter. And Marquecas has just been ejected. This is about as mad as you'll ever see Marquecas. Well, if, if you saw the, the strike two call, it's not even anywhere close to being a strike. And then to ring him up on the next pitch, which Nick feels was obviously because of the protest of the previous call. That's just bad umpire. That's that's all that is. That, that's a guy holding a grudge. So Showalter having his say with Jeff Nelson. Crew chief Jeff Kellogg is there as well, just in case. So the Orioles go three up and three down, nine strikeouts. And the Orioles now need a new right fielder. Latin America and the Blue Jays now with Escobar is short. Echeverria in double A. Cuban Guzman. Manny Lee. How about the players, Latin players that they use to trade to get some other great players like a Tony Fernandez brought him Joe Carter. Breaking ball hit off the end of the bat into left field. Gardner's got good speed, covers the ground, makes the catch. Dale Scott. But it was very unusual. Escobar was at shortstop waiting for his glove to be delivered by Edwin Encarnacion. Meals threw him out of the game from home plate. And then Cito comes out and says, How can you throw a guy out like that? I, I honestly don't know why. Escobar or saw anything Escobar did during that entire inning. Here's the only thing I could see that there was a borderline pitch called in his last at bat. There's Escobar out at shortstop. And he was saying something like you said something while you were running between first and second, whatever. And there he goes. He like throws him out of the game. Jose Molina tries to get out there before he throws him out and Cito Gaston then gets pitched. Yeah. And then he says you're gone too. But how in the world can an umpire throw out a player who's over 100 feet away doesn't know exactly what he's saying. You can turn around and hold your hands up like man that was a bad call. But you can't tell me the umpire could hear what Escobar was saying when he was at shortstop enough to warrant his ejection. No. I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. It doesn't make any sense. Manager goes out there to plead his case and then he's tossed out also. He has 27 infield hits this year and he can butt up the first baseline. Ryan realizes that runs after him and no, oh, he missed him. Greg Gibson is saying he missed him. And here comes Charlie Manuel. The home plate umpire too. Has a real good look at that if they want to look, talk about look, it. Chase is, uh, Chase is going over to the grass and say, look, he ran all the way over there. He's out of the baseline. Look at Scott Barry standing there as if to say, you want to talk to me? I, you know, feel free. And that's all Charlie's saying right look, now. There's too. the divot. Yeah, there's the divot. It's like, go talk to the other guy. Uh, I believe the rule says three feet. He's allowed three feet. Outside the baseline. I think he was more than three feet outside the baseline. 
Don't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, we see what the divot is. Look at Chase. Chase is still pointing to the, the grass. And now Charlie's pointing to the grass. <laughs> Greg Gibson doesn't seem to mind. What are you saying at the point at the point where he avoided the tag and then maybe he made the divot after the tag? Yeah, maybe. Now, all he wants him to do is ask the other guy. He's not going to ask him, though. Well, that's a big play because it puts two runners on with nobody out here at the top of the eighth. Well, let's see what you can see, what we can see here. Talking about Michael Bourne, what a great bunner he is, and with that speed, see Charlie Ryan Howard's trying to get to him. Now he misses him at that point, and there is where he makes the divot after yeah. he had gone by him, and I think that's what he was saying to him. That at the point where, at the point where um, he went around him, he was still on the baseline. Of course, Charlie got thrown out. You could hear the crowd roar there at the end, or I mean during that replay. And now Charlie's talking to Sam Holbrook, and he's probably saying the same thing to Sam Holbrook. Chase Utley's taking up the argument with, with Greg Gibson. Well, Greg Gibson must be, you know, laying out a, a, a different rule as to why he's not out for going out of the base path. Well, here you go right here at there at that point. Now he goes and his well, foot hits I guess the he's grass. Not three feet away from that tag right there. But here's there where he the is. divot comes up. But he's know. already passed him. Yeah, he's passed. That's what I was saying. That yeah. I think that's what Gibson. I'm trying to read his lips, and I think that's what he was saying. He's already passed him. He had already passed him. Crew chief came over from third base, Sam Holbrook. To Try and get Charlie off the field. Right there is where Greg Gibson heard it up, and he threw Charlie out. Try to check his swing. They appeal. He went. Scott Barry doing the same thing that Ryan Howard did to him with his hands on his hips. Ryan's got to be careful. He said, I'm mad at myself. Yeah, you saw the umpire, you know, put his hands oh, on but his he left. Yep. The one two pitch. Checked his swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, says Scott Barry. Uh oh. And he's, he's been thrown, thrown out of the ball game. How about that? They have nobody left. Players. So many players. Ryan Howard has been thrown out of the ball game, and the Phillies oh, have nobody left. Somebody better grab him. He well, is hot. He better get out, and he never liked to get. They've got to get a hold of him quick. Polanco is using his shoulder to push Ryan Howard away. Has he ever been thrown out of a game? That's a good question. I don't think so. I know that he was hot. I know that Scott Barry was hot. You can't do that. I think you got to use restraint. Cannot get thrown out of the game now. They don't have any players. They're going to need to use a pitcher to play a position. Yep. Wow. Ryan Howard has been ejected from this game. Davey Lopes, Rich Doobie, and Charlie Manuel talking about which pitcher they can use here at the top of the 15th. Ryan Howard has been thrown out of the ball game, arguing this check swing. This is the final out in the bottom of the 14th. Now, whether he went or not, he's got to cool his jets a little bit. Scott Barry says he went on the check, and then after he throws his helmet, and you make the decision, it's tough to tell there. It looked like he may have broken the plane. Ryan, not happy, throws his bat, and at that point he's thrown out, and then tosses the helmet. And Ryan told Greg Gibson, don't you try to talk to me. And because Ryan has been ejected from the game, Roy Oswalt will come in to play left field for the Phillies. Raul Ibanez, who has played first base before, is now over at first base for the Phillies. There goes Longoria, the throw down from Wilson. Was not in time. Looked like Longoria came off the bag. Angel Campos 
calls him out. The Longoria giving Campos some advice apparently. We to the bottom of the fifth, raise up five to one. Joe Madden, by the way, was ejected for coming out to argue with Angel Campos. There's Joe getting tossed. Joe's been thrown out of a number of the games against the Angels. This has been the skipper for the Rays. We'll show you the play here in just a moment. Got Bobby Abreu, top of the order, lead things off here against Wade Davis. Abreu, Kendrick, and Kiosko. There's Longoria. It looked like he was off the bag, reached back, and sure enough, he was out to me. He kept the tag on him as his foot went off the bases for a second. It was the right call. In there for strike three to Adrian Beltre. First strike got victim for Hernandez, and Beltre does not think so. It's back at Dan Bellino, the home plate umpire, two down. Looks like it might have been a change up this time from Hernandez at about 90 miles an hour, dipping down. He thought it was out of the strike zone, but it looks like a pretty good pitch. Back at Fenway Park, Adrian Beltre was not happy with striking out in the second inning, and he was saying something from his position as he took the field of the home plate umpire, Dan Bellino. Tried to make his way in to talk to Bellino. was intercepted by Angel Hernandez and in between innings here. And I'm not sure if he was ejected or not, but uh, he was definitely trying to get at the umpire, and he was ejected from this game. Home plate umpire Dan Bellino does eject him. Joe West is the crew chief of this crew. And now Terry Francona talking with the home plate umpire at the moment. Now that was very strange because Beltre was heading out toward his position. And I don't know if the umpire said something to him or he said something to the umpire, but all of a sudden there's people trying to keep the Beltre away from the home plate umpire. Yeah, Francona has been ejected. Didn't like whatever answer he got from Dan Bellino. They were talking very civilly for quite a while. And now Angel Hernandez gets in the way. Bellino is one of those umpires that's called up to fill in. And uh, nobody seems to know what the heck is going on here, except that Francona is trying to get a Bellino, and Angel Hernandez will not let him. And Terry wants to know why he can't talk to him. You can see several times, and of course, his veteran umpire and crew not letting him get near the young umpire as he has been ejected. Now the pitch in question was the strikeout call against Adrian Beltre. It was a changeup, I believe, from Felix Hernandez to see the count one and two, a two, zero and two rather. He thought that pitch was low and didn't like the call at all. Now, according to Amiga, it's a strike, but when Beltre looked back, it didn't look good at all. And there's Beltre coming in. I don't know if the umpire said something to Beltre or not, but he was out of his position. I wonder if he had been ejected at that point from his position. He might have been. Coming in. He might have said something and was ejected because I didn't see an ejection sign after that, so it no. had to be before that. For him to become running in like that, you have to figure that he was ejected at that point and then reacted. Called strike three. Seventh strikeout now for Gallardo. Now Andre Ethier just walking back. Joe Torrey up on the top steps, doing a little bit of yelling. Let's look at where that that's that's just too low. 0 for 2 today. Pitch misses low, 1 and 0. Uh, Giovanni Gallardo has been fantastic for the most part. Has given up uh, a run in the first and a run in the fifth of the eight strikeouts, limiting the Dodgers who have been hitting well in the first go. Oh. Here comes Ethier and Joe Torre out of the dugout. Well, Ethier must have been tossed out of the game because there's no way he'd come running out of the dugout and have a, a conversation with Johnson if he's not thrown out. So obviously, 
he or someone else from that dugout was chipping at him a little bit. I didn't see Johnson throw him out of the game, but he's got to be out of the game. Here's the strike three. Or actually, this is a pitch right there to Loney. So I think that maybe Andre's griping about that same pitch, saying, hey, same place it was to me. I didn't see any signal that Andre's been ejected. Watch Johnson here with his head in the Dodger dugout, and there's where he throws out Andre Ethier. And obviously, once Ethier is tossed out of the game, he's going to come and get his two cents worth. About him, and they're encouraging him, and that's got to stand for a lot. Great bunt by Desmond, and the ball is thrown away as it was tailing right into the runner. A run will score. Runners at second and third, nobody out, and it's a 3-2 game. They'll give Desmond a sacrifice, and I think the Nationals, are they going to call Desmond out for running outside the baseline? I hate this call. I hate this call worse than anything in the world. I have been campaigning for 30 years for that 45-foot line. Dan Radisson has been out of there. I, I hate that. That 45-foot line doesn't mean anything. You've got to establish your baseline. This has nothing to do. Look how far that pitcher is away from the uh, being in a straight line to that 45-foot line. The angle's terrible. That's a terrible throw. That's a terrible throw. You cannot call that play there. I mean, I would be livid. I'm livid up here. It's ridiculous. Ray, if the throw is right at the first baseman, now Joe West, of course, has to get his two cents worth in. Joe, the keeper of the game this year. Radisson is really livid. Well, you know, think about it. The reason the 45-foot line is put there is so that there's not an interference from a play around home base. But here's my point. If the throw is right at Albert Pujols and Ian Desmond's in the way, he should be out. That throw was not, nowhere not, near hey, to the first I, I disagree with that, Bob. If it's at the bag, if it's at the bag and it's right at him, if it's at the bag where it all happens right at the bag, right. you got to negate it because it's happening at the back where all the action is. You, he is inside the line. There's no question about it. I just don't agree with the line being there. And now, here's another thing about Joe West. Jim Riggleman is arguing with the home plate umpire who made the call. One umpire has already thrown out Dan Radisson, who is really hot. I wonder somebody else from our dugout has been tossed. Let me telestrate something here for you folks at home. This is called the 45-foot line right here. It's made because this area right here, when a catcher comes out and fills the ball, he has a direct line to the first baseman. Now listen, this ball is thrown from over here. This is the angle. How in the world is that 45-foot line? I don't care if he's running out here. It should not be affected. It is exactly, it, and I am so. I've seen it happen and turn games around my whole life, and I am adamantly opposed to the 45-foot line. I think somebody wrote it down there during Abner Doubleday's time and just left it, and it, it's just it doesn't make any sense. So that that home run was louder than the triple he hit. By the way, Drew, was it? Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, he's throwing out of the ball game. He just said second time. And uh, that, that's going to get Joe Curley out. Rob Barajas trying to plead his case with Marty Foster. And Belisario is gone. Home run just hit. Well, you get a home run hit, and then all of a sudden you come right back in again. Second guy you hit now. 
first two guys he's hit this year. And it doesn't take very long either. He's going to look right at him, point at him, and he's just going to tell him to get out of the ball game. George Sherrill will be summoned from the bullpen. <laughs> They're eight and a half games back out. Oh, no. That wasn't a swing. But Hinsky's down on strikes, and Bobby can't believe it. Man, what a big battle he put up. Ugh. No. The bat stopped. I mean, his hands kept coming forward a little bit. The bat stopped. And somebody's See, getting he's, thrown out. Now he's going to add insult to injury and throw somebody out from the dugout. That's just. I don't understand that part of it either. Hinsky's uh, in the dugout. Nobody in the world except the umpire knows he's hollering at him. Why? Why make a bad situation worse? Flip a coin, Bobby said. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Strike call and Ramirez looks back and is saying something to Gary Cedar. Strike. He just got tossed out. He just got tossed out of the first pitch of the at bat with the bases loaded. However angry he may have been, he just hurt his team badly. Yes, he did, and all he did was mention that the pitch was away, but it's how he must have said it to Gary Sedenstrom, and now he will be gone. And Maybe that's a situation that's only going to help Ned Coletti make that decision to lead, let him go on a waiver claim. Yeah, that operative phrase, George, he may be gone in more ways than one. You're right. Yeah, absolutely it is. Let's look at the pitch coming in from Matt Reynolds. Thought it was off the plate. The fourth strike zone thought it was off the plate. Why is that pitch any different than a pitch that walked to Osmus that he didn't call a strike? So now they'll have to go to their bench. They're going to have to get somebody else. Reed Johnson, another guy has a little bit of pop in his bat. There's Joe Torrey, Don Mattingly. Neither one of those guys got off the bench to go defend anyone. It hurts his team an awful lot. They, as Ramirez gets tossed. But what you do now, if they were to happen to get back into this ball game, you know, the bench is depleted now to a backup catcher and a backup infielder, in Belliard and Johnson. I mean, uh, for all of us. Just a short lead by Savelli. All right. Can they turn it? No. Yeah, it's too quick. Well, they were turning it about as fast as they could, and now Ozzy's going to come out to talk with Bob Davidson. Look from up here. Look from up here. Like right. he was safe. I thought. I thought he was safe also. Taking a look and see. They did it as quickly as they could do it. Safe. He's safe. Here's Jeter with two down, and you got there. Breaking ball, Kelly with another chance to dive up with it. The throw! Yeah! Buddy Black coming on out to argue again. You play whatever song you want, says Kelly Johnson. Really frustrating. I think those two things came together. 
And here is the play first. Well, just a fabulous play. Diving to his right by Kelly Johnson. That's the third time he's had to sprawl this inning. And then watch how close the play is at first. Safe or out? It's just so tough to tell. Wow. That's how close that play is. My goodness. And Bud Black, he didn't like the call. And, well, guess what? Gone. Frustrated. Maybe a little bit of intent for Buddy because last night, Mike Everett kept an eye on David Eckstein when he was hot. Almost counseled David as David was upset with Tim McClellan, who was the first base umpire.